<laughs> okay. So this is a draft version of the term project. Uh, and I want to focus on just the first part of it. Let's see. So this, um, this is still a draft version. The part that probably matters most is this first part where um, you're being asked to um, come up with a title, a list of possible sources, and uh, an image. So I've, I've given that title bibliography case, but you should think of that as being a topic area that you're interested in, a list of things you might read, a short list of things you might read, and um, just an image, even if it's a placeholder image. Uh, if, it, you know, if you're really interested in the topic for today, it might be a picture of a casino in Macau, China, or Las Vegas, or some other place. Um, even though you have no interest, you know you're not going to do a casino uh, in Las Vegas, what you really want to do is a casino in Macau, China, um, then um, you can just throw in an image of a casino just to, as a placeholder. So that um, will be something that you should focus on uh, for posting to the Term Project Prezi uh, by a week from this Friday. So uh, in 10 days. Is that OK? Um, so how many people already think they know what they're interested in looking at in terms of a topic or a case? How, how many people have a sense of what they want to do? Like just a rough idea. OK. That's good. And do you have an idea of your topic? Or and not your what what image you might take, or do you have an idea of what image, uh, but no idea what topic that image is related to? Who has an image with no topic? Okay, who ha you have an image? What's yeah, the image? Like um, the face of uh, uh, Audrey Mobility. Mm -hmm. um, and like we concentrate on that face, to kind of absorb. Okay, well that's the topic is automobility. You like that topic. So other people, do you have a favorite topic? Like let's since we're seminar size, let's just talk about it. So Kian, do you have a topic area you're interested in? And no is an okay answer. Just confused, like just still bad for between topics. Mm -hmm. Between which ones? First day to today, everything seems like connected, mm -hmm. like one after another. Mm -hmm. So I just not, I'm not sure like what aspect should I be focusing on. Mm -hmm. So I'm still thinking. Yeah. Okay, that's a good answer actually. Jake, what do you do? You have an idea for topic area? Mm, not to solve one, but. Mm -hmm. I feel Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Josh? Um, maybe organism. I'm not really sure. I have to go back and look at like all the stuff I did and see which I felt I had the strongest mm -hmm. connection and to. And do you have a, a sense of an example that might work for that topic? Um, you were talking about casinos, and I know that in... Uh, Springfield nearby, they're planning on building a big casino. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about how that could affect the city in terms of in terms of the city as an organism. But I'm not really sure. That one's a good career choice, but not uh, a good term project choice. Okay. Like you could you could build a career on that and eventually become governor of Massachusetts. Um, and we support that path. But in the meantime, 
it's just a cute little term project. It's hard to analyze something that's not there yet. That's true. So to prepare you to uh, become governor, um, the thing that you might look at is someplace else that built a casino and uh, it either turned out fantastically well or not so well so that you could bring that to your campaign uh, director and say, okay, this is what I want to put in my 30-second ad. So you're gonna, when you move from this term project to your campaign for governor, you're going to have to crop the video down from 60 seconds to 30 seconds. So anticipate that. Okay. No pressure. Jeffrey. Well, the subject I thought that would be fairly compelling, I don't know how I would find an image for it, because um, an example I would like to use is that of um, uh, mixed income housing development where like in New York City, I think 15% of yeah. units have to be you know, affordable mm -hmm. housing. And in one particular instance, I remember reading about how they created a, a back door for the... Yeah. Um, for the 15%. Right, right. <laughs> um, uh, but I don't know how I would, what kind of an image I could use. Well, the New York Times is uh, giving you a huge head start. Yeah. So have, check out how they visualize that. Okay. And then do it better. Which is not easy because the New York Times is tough competition for us here in this class because they're yeah. so good at this. I, I really wanted to use uh, an image from a New York Times article, but it was just an Im it was not an actual photograph. It was right, it's already. But they, they're great to hint at how you might do uh, something that satisfies our criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't satisfy our criteria. They're just a newspaper. We have higher standards. But they, they're, they're really amazing. Okay, all right. What are you thinking? Um, I'm so skeptical in terms of image. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking like more mechanical than it looks. But automobility? The automobility, like, I feel the fact that they couldn't really reach out, they were in general, like, the site that we could concentrate in, like, mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. So I'm still in the process of what about, um, I don't know, Dubai? The problem is like it's very artificial. Yeah, and so done, there's not really an automobility problem yet. Yeah, so I feel that it's kind of, yeah. Well, in a way, you could say automobility is awesome. Look at Dubai. Very dubai yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah, but like, I feel I need to really illustrate something that's really functional in terms of, like, illustrate some problems and we can solve them. Uh -huh. Yeah, Dubai is kind of a false example for a problem. It's not really a problem. Yeah, it it will be, be a problem. It will be a huge problem. But now it's like great, right? You don't have traffic jams in Dubai, do you? I mean, kind of. I mean, side street. Yeah. yeah. It's cute. <laughs> That's so cute. Your traffic problems in Dubai. So, automobility in Dubai doesn't really go together, I think. Um, but automobility and almost any other place in the world. Yeah, maybe India. India is a great automobility yeah, thing. It's very packed. Unless you want to do something positive. The term project is really a wonderful opportunity uh, to demonstrate, surprise us, and demonstrate something that actually works. You know, any YouTube, you know, any 14 year old kid living in his mother's basement in India can come up with dramatic videos of traffic jams, you know, anywhere. So leave that to them, the horror stories of automobility. It'd be great if you could find a positive example of something that was horrible and now is less than horrible. Yeah, like what did they do to solve this? And that might hold some promise for the rest of us. Okay, Marina. Um, I'm not really sure yet, but I was really interested when we were talking about um, uh, one topic in particular was when we when they raised the pedestrian pathways off the street level, 
Mm -hmm. And it was just like an idea that I had seen so many times in like different like futuristic renderings and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is like something really great. Um, but thinking of the world as our number one teacher, I think there are, it's not only a misconception, the only misconception, I think there are a lot of those, like really like popular ideas that people would think would work, but they've already been tried. So maybe, I don't know, exploring and like finding some of these like large problems or... Um, like that one? Yeah. I don't know if I want to stick to that one. I kind of uh -huh. want to like... There's more, I guess. I'm but sure I'm, there's a case that works somewhere. Yes. I think we talked about I just one. don't know where it is. But we did. I thought it was in... Was it in China? I don't remember. Oh, one. yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah. But, I don't know. I'm Hyper not saying they all don't work, but I'm saying, well, what makes them work? What doesn't make them work? I don't know if I would... Well, the... Is there's enough for me to stick to just that topic? Or if well, the different? awesome one, the awesome opportunity is in the case where there are several dozen examples of where people were very optimistic that it was going to be a great thing, and none of them worked, except for one worked. So that is the world, uh, that's like the world speaking very clearly to us about lessons. And we would be, uh, those, your fellow humans would be grateful for your work to clarify the lesson that the world, I mean, your interpretation of the lesson that's available to all of us would be extremely valuable. Because I don't, I don't know how this, I just know all they, all, they never work. I, I can tell you why they don't work. You know, criti criticizing things, negative examples of things that don't work, that's easy. Jake, you should put that away. Um, the positive examples of when they do work, that's precious. And, um, and that's something to focus in on if, you, if you're so lucky to find something like that. Okay, Ethan. Um, the ideas around Radiant City as far as mixed use neighborhoods it's mm -hmm. really interesting to me to just um, mm -hmm. kind of unanswered mm -hmm. because like it's a huge opportunity for us as far as what's what's the best setup for people to live in different lives or at least yeah. something that's centering around planning and businesses and something that's separate separate than the function of like how everyone how we, how you can serve people's daily lives is the best function. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. And this is one that uh, I'm so grateful for your guys' work because I'm, I'm so confident, falsely so, that mixing everything everywhere is the right solution. And the examples that you guys brought during Radiant City uh, have disturbed me. And uh, I'm deeply troubled now. And I'm very grateful. I really, you forced me to say I don't know exactly what the right, but I do still believe that it, it, the right answer is not something you can verbalize outside of a very clear example. The, the answer is something like here's a spatial mix. You know, it has to do with actual architectural space. The, answer, the right answer is an architectural answer. It's not a verbal answer. It's not a policy answer. It might involve some distances, like when I said a quarter mile uh, distance uh, of build however tall you want for a transit-oriented development. Something like that, but that's not a very satisfying answer, a quarter mile. Uh, what is the architectural, spatial, formal spatial arrangement with enough air and enough density to make a proper... It's kind of like explaining how do you build a fire to someone. You know, I don't ask me to explain how to build a fire. All I know is uh, the only the best way to to build a fire is have enough fuel um, packed closely enough together, but not too close. Have enough air, but not too much air. That's how you build a fire. It's not very useful, right? It's the same thing with, with the mix of uses that you're talking about. It's like, have enough density, but not too much. Have enough open space, but not too much. Have the right mix, you know, 
have the right balance between housing, work, recreation, and transportation, and, and the high, high service level of transportation. That one's easy, really high service level of mass transit. So, um, yeah, so thank you all for troubling me, and I look forward to being more troubled by your work. So, uh, what questions? So, I, the thing to look at here is um, the most important thing is probably this deadline of post to term project Prezi, 8 a.m. Friday, f the 4th of March. Does that mean we are exempted from our usual Friday posting at 8 a.m.? No, <laughs> it's not. Um, but Professor, I have uh, a review on Wednesday. Is it okay if we cancel class that day? And is it okay if we don't show up? No, I don't care what your other classes are. At least that's my official position is I don't care what your other classes are. I do care deeply for your well-being. But we still have class. The class happens. The class pushes forward. Um, I'm recording this for your classmates who aren't here, because that's how big-hearted I am. Um, plus, I'm selfish. I don't want to repeat everything. So, um, and then this first part, um, we kind of just did this. Which of the course topics seem to matter most? Uh, what examples uh, resonate with you or upset you? And I guess I'm. I'm uh, encouraging you to go with uh, with the positive. So I'm deleting upset you from my final draft. Um, what example of specific formal spatial institutional arrangement offers the strongest evidence in favor of uh, a powerful idea? The, the negative example can be a secondary thing. Like, Myrna can show us, uh, you know, her six favorite uh, disastrous, and then, you know, and then that takes about 12 seconds. And then the rest, you can focus on um, just really, here's what seems to work. Here are the ingredients. Um, okay. Uh, So um, maybe on Friday we'll get into these other elements um, more specifically. Um, Jeffrey and Dom have the advantage of having taken thesis prep one, right? Did you take that? You didn't take thesis prep one? OK, never mind. Um, so. Uh, because this is a four-credit course, and the last time I taught it was a three-credit course, the um, I think what I'm doing is um, I'm alter. I'm going to give you an altered syllabus, and it will be something like this, just um, for a hint. It'll be something like this, where uh, I'll we're going to get it down to. Um, from 11 topics to 10 topics. And um, and then we'll, we'll take uh, week 11 and week 12 to work on the, um, the term project. And that will, because I do care, about your health and well-being. I, I want to taper down the demand of this course as your studio course predictably will taper up or explode up. Um, so this is my accommodate, this is the accommodation I'm willing to do. And also in recognition of how brutal the, the steady regular demand of this course is. It's very demanding and you, you are, most of you are doing an excellent job. Uh, keeping up. 
especially those of you who are here. Um, and because uh, before I see you on Friday, have you gotten your midterm grades yet? So some of you are going to look at your midterm grade and you're going to say, Oh, it did. So some of you are going to look at your midterm grade and say, oh, an A. I've never gotten an A for a midterm grade. Well, um, I've never had students who deserved an A at midterm, so thank you and keep up the good work. Um, you, or you got an A-, uh, which is my way of saying, I think you're a candidate for an A for this course, so um, just you know, don't, don't falter, just push get get there, especially with the term project, because it's worth so much, so many points in your final grade. And if you get a B, then um, I'm assuming that's all you want, and you'll be fine, as long as you don't drop the ball and, um, and get hit with this one. I hate it when this happens. The one I looked at, I showed you last time. It's this one in bold. Failure to submit at least seven weekly journal assignments or seven weekly analysis assignments may result in a grade of F for the course. Uh, I'm kind of obligated to fail you if you don't hit that. Uh, both of those, seven or more. Uh, so if you got a C on your midterm grade, um, it's because you should have gotten an F, but I didn't want to trigger the alarm bells all over campus and you know, send counselors scrambling to meet with me and, and what are you doing to your students? So when you see a C, interpret that as an F uh, unless you um, scramble and make up for the missed journal and analysis assignments. And you don't have to do that. You could just drop the course. But please don't make me give you an F. I hate that. So. I, it's actually not me giving you. Please don't earn an F. Um, for those of you listening from home, because I'm recording this. Um, and um, and I am. there will be a late penalty, um, but it's better than getting an F for the course. So either drop or make up the work, please. Um, any questions about that? Okay. Uh, and um, in back at the term project assignment, there will be things like this throughout the assignment that um, when we talk about about on Friday, there will be one standard for the undergraduates in the course and, and a higher standard for the graduates. Sorry and you're welcome. And this course is fulfilling uh, a prophecy that you will all be excellently prepared. The prophecy is that all of you will be excellently prepared for success in the graduate program, uh, or the final year of the graduate program, when you're faced with the challenge of writing uh, a significant piece of work uh, called a thesis. And so this, is, uh, this course is being retooled, as are the other concentration studies courses, to fulfill that prophecy of easy success for you all. But it will take more work earlier in the undergraduate program to ensure that success. And it's connecting, it's connecting the writing that you did as freshmen to the writing you will do for those of you who go on to the graduate program it will connect those two episodes of writing that previously had been disconnected by a gap of negligence on our part. Sorry about that, um, recent graduates. Uh, and if you don't go to graduate school, then it's a connection from the writing you did in the freshman part of this program and the writing you will do as professionals, uh, successful professionals out there in the world. Uh, there is no longer um, a career path in architecture for people who are not uh, comfortable verbalizing ideas. Um, that Those days are gone. Everybody writes now. Okay? So any questions about the term project? We'll discuss it more on Friday.
uh, specifically the annotated bibliography and the bibliographic essay. What is that? Um, and hopefully you'll recognize elements of that from your weekly exploratory writing. So it won't be such a huge leap from that. Should the draft title be kind of like this one sentence statement that we can read past, or just kind of a topic? It really can be either of those. Um, and really, the point of this assignment for uh, March 4th is so that we have something to talk about. And um, it, almost anything for a title will work. Like, if, if today were March 4th, uh, Naila would write you know, something about automobility, and that would be OK. It, uh, and someone else's title would be, I don't know, if it were today. Hopefully by March 4th, uh, it, the, you'll have something more specific. The more specific you can get, uh, the more help you can get. It's not cheating to have something very specific. It's just much easier to catapult forward if you choose something specific that's, that's wrong. So um, there is a, a book on writing and uh, there's a technical term for this technique. And it's called, and excuse my French, it's called a shitty first draft. And that is the technical name for this. So it's to encourage you to get it out there, commit to something. It might be bad and immediately rejected, but it'll be rejected with clarity. Why is this bad? Why is something else better? Is extremely useful. In the Thomas Edison, the tradition of Thomas Edison, which I don't have to explain, right? He got it wrong. 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 And then he got it right, and he couldn't have gotten it right without the 167 times he got it wrong, right? And so the shitty first draft is a way to quickly get it wrong, so that you can get it right sooner. Did you grow up with Design Squad on public television? Someday, I'll get a group of students and know what Design Squad is. Okay, it's like Sesame Street, but for high schoolers. I guess maybe it was canceled. I don't know. Okay, so enough of that. So we join now our regularly scheduled uh, program. We return now to our regularly scheduled program. And um, since I don't want to eat up my memory,